meme. Oh, there we go. I'll invite you up to speak to everyone. You should just be able to join the stage. Oh, whoa. <clears throat> Perfect. Good morning. How are you? Travel. It's 5 p.m. here, Reese. Thank you, though. <laughs> yeah. Morning somewhere, you know? I'd just like to spread that. But all right. Good afternoon. Happy to be All right, Ben, uh, whoever's on stage, if you guys want to get started, anyone's got some uh, pertinent questions, same as always, I'll invite people up to, uh, to have a chat. Uh, there is, of course, the uh, text channel, so if you can't tune in or if you have to leave and there's a question you would like answered, uh, you can always drop it in there, our mods will find it, and, uh, and obviously Kay is recording, so we will be able to listen back to it later. Uh, Noah is going to drop by at some point too. Maybe sooner than later, uh, so we will introduce you to him, and I think Alex might drop by as well, who is our new uh, marketing guru. So we'll, uh, we'll get to know a few people today, and, and we'll cover some bases. And a quick question, if that's okay. Shoot. So the community was asking a bunch of questions, and I was trying to summarize them to make some make sure some got it answered. One that was pressing is people keep telling people about DV. With the cash out, I know that MTL was coming to kind of support that. Is that still a priority? And do we have a timeline? I know last I heard with the MTL was like three months. I know that's like a loose timeline and not like a total commitment. Um, but is that still a priority with OMI fit NFTs? Like, is cash out still going to be a thing for fiat? Yeah, absolutely. If anything, I think the uh, the gem fiat will come before the OMI one. Um, we're obviously going to move to Immutable first. When I, I spoke to Michael, the CTO, uh, a week or two ago, uh, when he was mapping everything out and it, and it became pretty apparent that we could build it all in now to be able to use OMI in the market uh, while we're on GoChain, but then we literally have to rebuild it all again anyway. And it will probably take sort of you know, six to eight weeks for that to happen. So for the OMI to NFT, we'll move to Immutable and then, and then that will be developed and built in. I think I just added that to the... Um, it should be in the, the new tokenomic and token metrics article that's now on the blog. Um, and the gem fiat cash out is coming along now. That's that's already happening and in development. Uh, and because we're running the two concurrent systems, we actually don't need to wait for the OMI thing before we can we can implement the gem cash out. So, look, I'm not going to put a, an exact timeline on it, but um, but yeah, it's it's in the works. And if it all comes off, we'll probably see it in about six weeks. Call it eight. And if it's longer than that, please don't blame me. But uh, yeah, it's definitely being being worked on as we speak. And just to add to that, obviously with the uh, the ability to cash in and out, you know, there is an MTL. There will be KYC, uh, same as any any app. We are subject to the FAT for rules and all of those kind of regulations. So there will be some sort of KYC process there to be able to do it. Um, but it, but yeah, it does mean that you know, it, it really opens the economy of the collectibles uh, rather than, you know, at the moment it's obviously closed. So. Awesome. Thanks for the answer. And then just one other one that the community is like just really, really uh, kind of excited for was uh, an update on the drivable T-Rex. Trevor? Um, I'm not going to answer that now. <laughs> <laughs> Save them the best for last. That's fine. Okay, cool. Fair. <laughs> hey, Trev, have you seen that uh, the, the NFT that Kaki Gaijin made of you riding a T-Rex? I've seen, I, I will say, I've seen all of my fan art and I'm a big fan of it. I like that I have fan art. So, yes, I have seen my drivable T-Rex. I actually have those NFTs for you whenever you're ready. I just need a wallet address. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Hey, hey, everyone. Hey, mate. May I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Hey, my name is Joshua. Pleasure. Glad you guys are doing this. Been holding Omi for a while. Um, this is a question about the buybacks. I saw that they just recently started. Yes? Indeed, they have. How okay. Very exciting. Um, since it was in the white paper, are you going to backdate the amount that when it wasn't occurring? So last month, the month before? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they've just started and they will obviously happen moving forward. I'm not sure how far back they go. If we go right back to the start, I'm waiting on um, 
on the Dan and Dave approval on that. So, or okay. We'll, okay. more just more information on it than anything else. Cool. And oh. then um, a a consumer question versus a collectible question. Uh, I do see that this is going to be very mainstream very soon, uh, more than what it is right now. And I've done some collecting, but I've also more would be a consumer where I just want to have uh, a digital art to play with versus actually have a collectible. So I was wondering if in the future or even a possibility where you'll have something where they're only a dollar. Because uh, let's just let's just, main, yeah. main, let's just say this does get really mainstream, and there's kids that just want to have one in their dollar versus a parent that comes on the platform and sees some of these launches are like eighty or ninety dollars. For example, for example I, understand I understand a in a, in a collector, collector aspect of it for sure because these are increasing value and they're very valuable. I see the direction that this how you guys have even approached it because of the background. But, I mean, I would love to have a Superman just to have for a dollar, or a Batman, or anyone in, or any digital art in aspect of that. So that's my question. Yeah, great question. Uh, I'll say right off the bat, it's, I, I don't think we're going to see any of the actual licensed content going for a dollar. Yeah, that's um, cool. Yeah, uh, purely because, you know, we, we actually have a few different tiers of collectible releases now. Um, outside of, you know, the art and, and some of those things. So the pricing is, is standardized now across sort of the premium tier where, you know, I think commons are $30 up to ultra wares at 90 or, or thereabouts. But then we also have other drops like the um, Tokidoki Myrmicornos. Uh, they were priced much more appropriately. And then as the platform continues to develop and we roll out new features, you know, you'll have all accessories and, and different items you can add to your showrooms. They're the kind of things that will come down to, to a lower price point because we can essentially, you know, some of them will be provided at, I'm not going to say infinite, but, you know, if they're shelving and, and some stock standard things, uh, we can we can mass produce those and they're not branded. So we can obviously lower the price point on them. Um, Okay. And something you want people to have them in their showrooms and, and be able to enjoy and explore that stuff. Um, right. Yeah. Um, just just from a, a per, from my perspective, I probably would have already spent like two or three thousand dollars on generics that didn't that weren't collectible because they're so fun to play with. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, it, right. but in a I but in a collector sense, I haven't bought one. I'm only been buying the token because I see. I'm, you know, I have almost two million of the Omi tokens mm -hmm. because of obviously the five or two or three years from now, I'll be very happy because what you guys are doing is amazing. But in regards to, I'm six years old and I see this cool app and I want to buy it, but then my parent can't even afford eight or nine dollars. But yeah. twenty cents, thirty cents, something to play with is just a something I was thinking about that I'd ask that I was really would. Really wanted to know. So that's cool. Thanks for the info. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Look, we've also talked about, um, you know, now that we're seeing such a nice marriage between uh, between the crypto world and and the collecting world, NFTs, mainstream, all these kind of things, and, and obviously the community we have around us is, is so strong already, um, we really want to start integrating some of those things. Like I'd love to see some cool community collectibles hit the platform at some point. Um, they're the kind of things we can offer for less. There's been talk of a, a VV logo or, or something like that, you know, just, just other options in there. And, and as I said, the only way we can really lower price points on some of those things is to do it with unbranded content. So it's definitely in the right. arenas. Um, and we definitely, you know, we want to make this as accessible to everybody as we can. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that will be part of the conversation moving forward. Very cool. Hey, hey, uh, I've just got a question. So I'm going to be that guy who addresses the elephant in the room. Um, so we know that VV has obviously been working extremely hard um, and had to go through quite a lot of compromises with the whole uh, stolen collectible issue. Um, so I'm just going to approach it from another point. Um, so a few, a few people who had purchased collectibles from the marketplace, um, they had those collectibles recalled. Um, and they had purchased those a few months ago. And during that time, 
the value of the collectibles that they had purchased had gone up. So for what they had paid for it, which is how much they'd get compensated, um, they can't actually rebuy the collectible that they had recalled. And obviously, um, you know, the email that they had shown, you know, they were unaware that the collectibles were stolen in the first place. Um, so the question that I have is, I know that in this kind of scenario, um, it is a bit more, I guess, unfair on the person who had purchased it. Could it be a point of conversation to potentially, since we haven't in a while had had a secret rare drop uh, for people who are affected by something in the app, could this be a potential point of conversation for maybe having a secret rare drop for these people who were affected by the uh, recall? Um, just wanted to see if uh, you could share anything on that. Yeah, yeah, I, I really like that uh, idea, actually. And I agree with you. Obviously, we are... Um trying to make good on, on what happened and, and return those collectibles to the people that were affected. But I completely agree with you on, on that front that obviously the value of those collectibles has appreciated since, since the event. So look, the team have always been really on point with these kind of things, um, trying to make it as fair as possible. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if that became an option, but uh, at this point, I'm also not going to say that that is happening uh, because that's not my call. Um, so, yeah, I, I've always had faith in the way that things have been run. As you just mentioned, you know, we did do a, a secret rare drop for people who were affected by a bug in the early days. Um, so if that becomes the, the best way to, to, you know, really make good on the situation and, and so that everybody feels like they have benefited somehow, you know, or, or not being hard done by at least, um, then I'm sure the team will try to implement something like that too. Cool. Yeah, that, that, that's really helpful. Um, and my second question um, just goes to Trevor. So we had the Superman drop recently um, and the Superman's arms and legs are kind of like dismembered or detached from his body. Um, so I just wanted to ask, is that a feature or is that a visual bug? And if so, is that going to be uh, repaired at some point? Um, that would probably, uh, that's a good question. Uh, the way the models are built, so those came from, because it's based off the uh, the original, like the, 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 the toy, like the, the collect, the physical collectible version of it and the way those models are made, um, they're made in parts so that they can be put into like basically put into an injection mold so they can create the plastic parts. So that's what the basis of that model was. And it was probably done in such a way that we took those pieces, put it together in order to create the 3D model and somehow along the lines of bringing down the uh, number of polys that you have from like a physical model. If you're making a physical toy, you go to a, an extremely high poly count way higher than you would ever use in, a, in like a game or in a, uh, real time space uh, because you want that high level of detail so that when it goes into the uh, machine that mills the tool or the the machine that tool that makes the uh, injection mold, it's um, got as much detail in it as possible so that you don't have like faces in your model um, when it's uh, molded. Um, somehow in the process, um, the the pieces were clearly not uh, joined, and so yeah, it is something that we would have to look into fixing. Um, I don't know where that lives in the plan in terms of fixing those little issues, but we um, we will look at it and talk. I'll talk about it with the team. Cool, thank you. Perfect. Hey guys, uh, say that again, sir. Could we piggyback off that question, uh, the Superman? Yeah, go for it. So I know some of us have noticed that the uh, symbol is missing from. The, uh, the symbol is missing from the cape. Um, we've noticed that there's been some also minor changes to some of the collectibles. Is this just um, something that the team is deciding to do or uh, something that the licensors are requesting? It's hard to say. It could be some. Um, ultimately, when we're working with a licensor, depending on, on the licensor, they sometimes get very hands on. Sometimes they're more hands off. Um, I don't know for sure what the examples that you gave if it came from the licensor. It was a, something that we changed that the licensor approved of or something like that. Uh, but it, there's no like, I, I don't want to say there's no like rhyme or reason to it, but it's more like it's just on a per asset case and like depending on what the licensor is looking for, what they want to do. 
I mean, I think the most immediate examples are just, you know, the Superman symbol. And then now I think the syringe is missing from Lady Death. The syringe is missing from Lady Death. Um, I, uh, that one, I, I actually, I don't, I, I didn't actually work on this collectible, so I don't actually know gotcha. the answers with those. But again, I wouldn't look at it in terms of like, we're working off, we're working with the licensors to create all these assets and running it by them. So anything that you're seeing is going to have been approved um, by the licensor. So uh, like, it's not like we're going, <laughs> for lack of a better word, we're not going like rogue on any of these assets that we're putting out. This is all stuff that the licensors were okay with, they signed off on. And uh, for various reasons, it might have been room. I mean, the syringe is an interesting one because how do you, get it like what's the best way to show off a very very thin needle if you were to do something like that uh, uh just like that's me musing on that subject i don't actually know what the uh, reasoning for it is but ultimately it was like no no changes are made with the without the licensor's approval gotcha appreciate it i know there's some new people in the community that were kind of asking and that kind of helps shed some light on it thanks trevor Speaking of uh, new people in the community, guys, that's probably a pretty good segue. I might introduce Noah. Noah, if you're uh, in the chat, mate, and your microphone is not on mute, do you want to just say a quick hello? Okay, we'll come back to you, Noah. You might have to, uh, well, maybe I can unmute you. Yeah, hang on. Probably need to turn on the push to talk uh, feature in Discord. Very good point. Noah, if you open the settings on this chat, uh, you'll need to assign a keyboard key as a hotkey so you can push to talk. That's usually the issue there, I think. In the meantime, no, guys, no, no, it's pretty common. <laughs> yeah, it is a common thing, isn't it? Uh, but while we're waiting on that, um, yeah, let, let's keep going. We'll take some more questions. Mr. S.G. Bacardi Von Kuda, if you've got something lined up, mate, have at it. <laughs> yeah, hi, Reese. Uh, greetings from North America. Uh, I just wanted to say that I appreciate everything you and the team are doing, uh, and I really hope that all the nonsense in the community doesn't begin to deter you guys from engaging with us like you do. Uh, because I really find these AMAs and YouTube appearances beneficial for the OMI holders and the VV users. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, you did just put out that article, which certainly answered a few things, uh, specifically the buybacks. But I do have two OMI questions, and one does get answered, but I just want you to confirm. And that was about the 2.5% fee on the secondary market if you're using OMI to purchase the NFT. You Can you confirm that? those will all go back to buybacks along with the 10% revenue from purchases? So if you're using OMI to purchase the NFT, there's no revenue there for buybacks. Um, so once that's enabled, OMI, if you're using OMI to transact peer-to-peer, -to -peer, that 2.5% just gets burnt. So it gets any sort of market transaction using OMI will send it out of circulation, basically. Um, it would, the buyback revenue comes from store purchases uh, because they're gem purchases. Now, I need to uh, find out if that 2.5% from gem purchases in the market uh, goes to buybacks, but I'm inclined to say that that's probably the ticket that licensors get to clip on secondary sales. Um, but you have to leave that one with me and I'll, I'll get it back to you for, uh, for next week if I've got more clarification. Great. Yeah, I should have said supplements the... Uh the 10% rather than goes with it. Um, and then my final question was just about the OMI token in general and this, this understanding of how it works, which might not be correct, but with us moving to immutable, does OMI going to the ERC-20 standard have anything to do with immutable or is that just the NFTs themselves? And the reason I ask that is because if it doesn't have anything to do with immutable, is there any reason why we couldn't do the conversion before moving to immutable and then listing on an exchange before immutable? Yeah, good good question. Uh, I, yes, in, in this instance, I think it does, or at least the decision has been made to do it all at the same time. Um, but we would be launching our 
ERC20 contracts on top of immutables uh, layer two um, because that's where that's where everything is kind of moving. So by mo- launching it directly on layer two uh, as an ERC20, you can still move it to, to any sort of Ethereum um, layer one, you know, any exchange that's supporting layer one. But what we're going to see in the next month or two play out is, is the transition of a lot of projects and tokens just to layer two and then you'll stay there. You know, I think some exchanges have already in- started integrating um, the layer two protocols, o- OKX maybe, or um, one of those was the first centralized exchange to integrate a bridge to layer two. Um, and by being there, it just means that there's no, you know, it, it, gas fees to transact on Ethereum come right back down to, to fractions of a cent instead of dollars at a time, all of those kind of things. So. I think it's just going to be part of the whole migration as opposed to doing it piecemeal, especially because if we did it now, people move their tokens across. Um, we're going to end up having wrapped OMI, GoChain OMI, ERC20 OMI. It all just becomes a bit of a mess. Uh, so I think that that's the logic behind it all. Great. Thank you. Uh, no problem. I've got a follow-up, actually. Um so I read your blog that you shared, Reese, uh, the Ecomi one that you wrote up with the update tokenomics and utility and everything. Um, phase um, two was quite two interesting was quite because it said um, that you'll be able to purchase a percentage of NFTs from the, uh, well, I'm assuming it's the primary market. So the question is, um, for those who are using OMI to purchase NFTs um, in this phase two rollout, does that OMI that they use to purchase the NFT, does that go to the burn wallet? Um, if that's assuming what phase two is about. That is a great question. Uh, I will need to, I'll confirm the details before I misspeak anything. But yeah, I think so. I think so. Otherwise, there's no real point for it. You know, any any gem purchase in the store at the moment sends those tokens to the burn wallet or, you know, starts that uh, token movement. So I think any purchases in the store using OMI would do that too. Now in the future, and it won't be straight away in phase two, but once we add accessories and things, you know, it gives us a lot more options to open up uh, OMI purchases in the store as well. Uh, and because, as I mentioned before, you know, we can almost have infinite mints on things like that or, or at least much higher edition numbers and things, um, that, that becomes another mechanism to burn OMI as well. So, yeah, I, I think that's definitely the intention there. So basically, everyone needs to start using OMI and destroy the supply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's kind of what we're encouraging at some point <laughs> once it's open anyway. Like, I know we, we understand that it's frustrating right now that the token doesn't have that utility. But I think everyone understands at this point the reasons, you know, why we're doing it in this phased manner. Um, but as we've said, you know, we're, we're only going to keep building in more ways to use the token, to burn the token, to benefit token holders. So, yeah, it's definitely worth holding those bags. Not financial advice. Hey, can you guys hear me now? Yep. Got to there, mate. You figured it out? Okay, yeah. I, I had to join on mobile. I'll, I'll get the PC figured out next time, so... Yeah, but it's great to be here. Thanks so much for inviting me to speak. No worries. It's good to have you here, Noah. And uh, from me, and, and I'll just hope no one in the community minds will extend a huge welcome to you. It's a pleasure to have you on board. While you're here, uh, do you want to just maybe give you a little intro, um, where you've come from, sort of the things you've worked on in the past, and, and then we can get into your role with us? Yeah, definitely. So, um yeah, I, I think some of the community here might already know me. Um, I joined Vivi as a social media and community manager recently. Um, so, yeah, it's been really great to to kind of start and jump in. But, yeah, as far as my background, um, so, uh, yeah, I've worked in social media for a few years, um, most recently at Blizzard Entertainment, uh, supporting Overwatch, um, which was, was great. And then before that, working at Kingston Technology um, for almost a year, uh, yeah, supporting all of their... Um, consumer product lines and and all of the stuff um, on the Kingston side. Uh, also working closely with the people at HyperX Gaming um, for all their promotion and stuff. So so that was definitely great. Um, and yeah yeah. Before that, a bit more um, into my background. I uh, went to college at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, majored in public relations and communications. So um, 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, really, really into all things marketing and uh, communications. But yeah, also besides that, I'm a huge gamer. Um, love gaming, entertainment, tech, collecting as well. Um, so that's really what I would say drew me to uh, join Vivi. Um, and you know, seeing how much of a vibrant community it is, um, and how passionate everyone is, um, it's super exciting. So yeah, definitely, definitely happy to be here. Awesome, man. Awesome. What an intro. Uh, just on that, I mean, how how have you found your first few weeks with the company? Um, I mean, you've, you've obviously started to get to know the community. Um, I know most of us, like, there's, there's so many people creating content and incredible things. I mean, what, what is your impression? Where do, where do we want to take this? Anything on that front? Yeah, so first few weeks here have been, been great. Um, it's been really great, you know, getting up to speed with everything and, you know, really sort of understanding what makes the VV platform and brand so special and, you know, how, how it's, of course, different from the Ecomi side. Um, but yeah, in terms of the community, you know, it's been amazing just seeing all of the amazing community content everyone creates um, and kind of jumping into that side as well as the community management side, you know, jumping into Discord and, you know, getting to start having conversations with people and really learning kind of what makes this community tick and what makes people excited um, so that's been great. As far as uh, plans for the future, um, I know we have a couple other people coming on board on the marketing side as well, who you'll probably meet soon. Um, but yeah, we're just like high level overview. We're, we're just planning to really um, kind of expand, especially because VV has kind of exploded um, probably beyond what a lot of people initially, you know, expected in the first few months, um, you know, so many users. So we're, we're just hoping, hoping to really kind of expand the marketing and, and bring the marketing side and, and user growth and promotion up exactly to um, really come in line with, with the user growth and trying to really make VV a, a mainstream thing. Um, and of course, that's going to take time um, and a lot of planning. But uh, yeah, definitely really excited to you know, get started early and, and start um, mapping all that out. But yeah, it should, should be really exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, some of you guys might see uh, another username, Alex, floating around. He can't join us today, I don't think, um, but we'll probably get an intro from him next week. So he is coming on to help with our marketing as well. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know where you guys sit. Obviously, we've always all watched the development of VV for the last six months. And now that the drops are smooth and, and we're bringing on the marketing team and, and all of those things, personally, I feel like we're just gearing up for the launch of VV, you know, whether that's the launch into the mainstream or, or into awareness. Obviously, we have the lead up to Comic-Con in the next few weeks, which is really uh, contributing to that. And uh, and I think we can confidently say that the app and the content are all ready to to handle the larger user base. So it's um, it's a really great time to have you come on board, Noah, and, and um, we're happy to have you around, mate. And, uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions for Noah, feel free as well. I think we have Trevor for another half an hour too. So if anyone has any pertinent uh, collectible questions, we'll probably bring them up first and then we can cover some other bits as we go. I had a question. Our game, a games industry person on the team. Very excited about it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's awesome. I know you worked, um, I think, at Riot and uh, Santa Monica Studio, right? I mean, that's, that's awesome. Also, yeah, uh, so. you know, both in Orange County, LA area, I think. So that's cool. Sorry, I cut some, I completely cut someone off. Go. <laughs> yes, hear me. I'll go. Uh, uh, hi. Yeah, I, um, I just had a question about NFTs in general. I, um, uh, I've been in Bitcoin since 2013. Uh, I, I work in technology industry and today I'm just a private investor. I, um, I'm, I'm actually bearish on the whole NFT industry, but I'm open to having my mind changed uh, as, as I learn more. So I just kind of found my way here. Um, who's who's actually buying like these collective? Like who's like what's 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 the market for this thing? Like who's who's actually buying this stuff from an end user yeah. perspective? Is it folks that, folks are, like, that are like? Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, you're right. Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just jump in there. So. It, it, it depends on the platform and, and what is being sold. Now, the majority of NFT uh, projects or, or platforms, most people that are buying them at the moment are, are crypto people. 
right? The, the people that are in the space and, and see the value proposition behind the technology. Um, now, to that effect, a lot of the NFTs that have been sold will be sold like they probably won't hold value. You know, they, they won't, they're, they're not things that are intrinsically tied to anything. Um, I've seen some pretty ridiculous things sell for some pretty ridiculous prices. Um, so a lot of that, that NFT hype cycle that we saw for the first few months of this year, yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that a lot of that stuff will, will hold no value other than, you know, that maybe intrinsic value to a certain person. Where the industry really opens is uh, twofold, I guess. For, for us, uh, we are leveraging, obviously, existing brands and licenses. So whilst a, a lot of our community right now has come across from crypto, just as much of it uh, have found us purely from a fan point of view, right? And, and we truly believe that everybody is a fan of something. Uh, and the goal of VV is to really be the Netflix of digital collectibles. So not only are we digitizing this IP and this content, like the Superman, Batman, and, and things like that, it lets us access the fans of those brands plus collectors and, of course, the speculators that are coming in from, from the crypto side and people who will, like, will you know, attempt to flip these things. Um, but, but they're all healthy parts of a market as well. Uh, in terms of a product and product market fit, I like to compare the the experience, right? And, and that was always really crucial to VV to, to really hone in on the user experience so that people actually enjoyed these collectibles. You didn't just get a, a 2D thing that lived in a crypto wallet and you couldn't see unless you opened your laptop and, and showed someone it, you know, that kind of thing. So I guess that's where our interactivity really stemmed from in, in terms of enabling people to use it in augmented reality and, and all of that kind of thing. Now, all of the people that are here at the moment uh, are obviously here for, for whatever reason they're here for, but, but I think fundamentally because people enjoy the app and they enjoy the experience. And what we've really been able to do is capture all of the physical components of collecting that people already know and love and translate them into or onto a digital medium, you know, and, and into a new digital world. And, of course, when you're building this product, I mean, that's that's what we're aiming for and hoping for, but you never know until it actually goes out if, if that's what we've achieved. And, and we're very humbled and, and very proud to be able to say that that is indeed, you know, that that's the response we're getting. We can see from this community that that, that is the interaction. Um, so that's, that's the line we took on the industry. Um, I know from the outside looking in, you know, one question I always used to get, like, what, what's the point? You know, why can't I just right-click and save, yeah. you know? And, yeah, of course, you, you can go to Google now and you can, you can save an image and have it on your desktop or whatever, but you don't own that image, you know, or you don't own that premium 3D collectible, uh, whereas blockchain as a technology enables that, right? You can now own digital files or digital assets. It, it's provable that it is yours as either monetary um and, and so are you mm. are you are are you finding like your customers or users are they are they excited about the ownership portion of this like like does that actually matter or is it yeah. I, I think from a from a tech perspective i can understand if you have a key to a certain digital product how that might be you know valuable if if you're in tech but i'm just thinking like just from a normie or a you know, non non technologist point of view, like are, are are people clamoring, or do you see them in the future saying, you know, I own the one of one of this, you know, Batman NFT? Yeah. Like, is that actually valuable to collectors? And again, I'm 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 not asking in a like mm, yeah, yeah. only way. It's just I'm just curious about it um, because I don't, when I talk to kind of friends of mine and uh, you know folks outside of crypto, I don't see this like like them getting excited about that versus owning a PSA 10, you know, Michael Jordan rookie card. Mm -hmm. I don't see how those folks would get excited about a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, Batman NFT. But again, I, I, I could be wrong about all this and yeah, yeah. it's to my own in investing peril if I am. So th th this is why I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Is, is this what you're seeing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are absolutely right. I mean, if you take it from a fan base point of view, I, I, I think there's, 10 million Batman fans in the world, 
right? Now, there's only... Uh, we released the very first appearance of Batman in premium digital format, right? So in the collecting world, first appearance collectibles tend to be the ones that hold or maintain the most value. Uh, and this is the first time ever and the only time that Batman can become a first appearance collectible in digital format. Um, you know, so, so previously maybe the first appearance was in a comic book and then there was the first appearance of the actual physical sculpture. So yes, we, we are absolutely seeing people um, translate those value propositions into the digital world with the key points of difference being that now that it's digital, you, you don't need to leave it in a box on a shelf to become dusty over the next 15, 20 years, then find someone on an eBay that also loves it as much as you and send it to them right. to be able to create that market, right? So NFTs, I mean, it's the same with the way we're using them, but what they actually enable is liquidity in illiquid markets, right? Because NFTs aren't just collectibles, you know, that everything will be an NFT in the next 10 years, house deeds, contracts, um, you know, you, you can have fractionalized ownership of a property or of a physical art piece or an art gallery, you know, there's, it, it's about to explode into this kind of, yeah, just, just create so many different financial markets around so many different products. Um, so that's, that's the tech point of view, but from a pure enjoyment and, and collector point of view or, or a fan based point of view, yeah, we are absolutely seeing the demand for the one of ones or the, you know, the lower mints, that kind of thing will continue to roll out new artists and new artworks as well with the same propositions. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for taking my question. No uh, problem. I'm going to check out the app. Yeah. Welcome to the community. Uh, yeah, thanks. No worries. All right, guys, we've got someone else on stage. If you want to hit Trevor with a question too, and I'll invite a few more people up. The Cray Mountain or I Believe, feel free. Hello, guys. Uh, I'm not confident with my English because I'm, com I'm coming from Greece. So excuse me that. Uh, thank everybody for uh, the hard work. We can see the result already. I have a technical uh, question uh, about the movement upgrade uh, that uh, we had on Ritmo. Uh, if we would see something uh, similar in the future, uh, because if I see a Batman moving, I would get chills. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, I don't know if we can release info on that, but uh, I'll leave that to you. Um, I won't give specifics, but yeah, we're always looking for ways that we can uh, upgrade uh, and improve and change the collectibles. And not just individuals, but also improving the whole like the, like the gallery and the AR viewer and like the rendering even just to improve all the collectibles as a whole, if they're on the app. So yes, the answer is I want to, I, again, I won't say specifics, but we're always looking at that kind of stuff. Are we looking at possibly um, improving complete sets? If you know what I'm getting at. Like value adds for like adding more stuff. If you complete a set um, or having a complete set animated. We've talked, I mean, I think what you're getting at is some of the beyond just like the content, but also to kind of more like gamification of the whole app. And we're definitely thinking about stuff along that lines and how we can uh, um, make trading and um, acquiring the full set that more valuable to, uh, to players. So um, again, I won't make promises on like what we're definitively working on, but yeah, that's definitely something we're thinking about. Okay, thank you very much, guys. No worries, thank you. I believe, if you've got a question up here. I think Johnny Dunn's got a question. Oh, sorry, Johnny. Yep, anyone jump in. And, you know. <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Can you guys hear me? My question would be, uh, do we have... Mine on the showrooms, like I know we talked about like themed showrooms and everything like that. I was seeing if we had like a bat cave coming soon or anything like that. Um, I'll say <laughs> baby sets on show baby steps on showroom improvements, jumping to entirely new showrooms. Those are uh, for a little bit of background. I worked on the environment art teams uh, on the next God of War, and environments are some of the biggest and longest and most time consuming. Uh, 
areas of games to create. So um, it's going to be a while before you start seeing stuff like that. Um, when we do it, you'll start seeing, holy crap, the level of quality for that kind of stuff is going to be insane. Um, certainly, I know we've teased like future like like improve like vv verse kind of stuff and improving the gallery and hopefully you'll see a big quality improvement in there and that should get you hopefully that'll get you more excited for that stuff to come down the line um but i i, I won't put a time window on when we'll get like new showrooms or improved showrooms but it's absolutely something that we're uh talking about a lot and setting ourselves up to get to that kind of future in the app just awesome. Good to know. I know it was a while ago, so just wanted to make sure. Appreciate it. No worries. Just on that, uh, the version two of the showroom is being developed, isn't it, Trevor? And I don't think we're that far away on that one. Uh, I, I, I mean, I won't speak to the timing. That sounds like a marketing question, but yeah, I actually, I'm, <laughs> I'm baking lighting on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Do it. Hey, don't get distracted over here, right? That's a it, that's the computer working its ass off. I just sit here and watch. <laughs> <laughs> I need to learn how to do that. That sounds great. <laughs> All right, who else have we got up here? Uh, the Todd Father, you got one there, mate. Yeah, I'll be real quick with mine, man. How's it going, Reese and Noah and Trevor and all you guys, man? My question was on um, future drops of collectibles. Do we see ourselves going into an area where? At some point in time, you guys will throw out a list of collectibles and allow the community to pick on the next said drop? Mm, it's, it's actually harder said than done, um, purely because of the way that, well, one, I guess, the timeline on developing the assets. Two, the licensors still need to approve a lot of those things um, before they can kind of happen. Look, I, I won't rule it out. Um, you know, to, to kind of be, but yeah, I, I don't see it being an option just yet. Trevor, do you have anything to say to that? I will say, I actually, I, first of all, I do think it's an awesome idea. I love that. It might be like the purest example of like listening to the community, engaging with the community. So I love it from that perspective. Uh, there are of course, timing and licensor things that get uh, that pro that get that make that much more challenging. Um, However, I will say in a roundabout way, as you, we're always paying attention to what you guys are talking about and what you're excited about. Um, I hear you on the drivable T-Rex, for example, um, but that's the kind of thing that's like, we're listening to it and we're reacting to that. And then it might be a long time because it takes a long time to get it approved by the licensor and then to build the content. But we are trying to respond to your feedback and hopefully deliver on some of those things that you guys are excited about and talking about in the community. So honestly, keep engaging and we're listening. Okay, awesome. Appreciate it, man. Just on that, uh, Trevor, while we've got you here, I know that you put out a little tweet a little while ago for uh, what people would like to see in the Master Collector. Was there any um, consistent theme there, uh, things that, that were really good ideas that we hadn't kind of considered, anything that stood out? There was a lot of really interesting stuff around, um, yeah, I mean, first of all, yeah, overall, there was a ton of stuff. I'm still reading through it and we're gleaning a lot of ideas from it. I think the things that people are excited, uh, certainly around like show, uh, like making the showrooms more customizable and improving on that and like building some sort of uh, progression along that route was something that's really exciting for us. A lot of the ideas around, um, like Omi utility and how we can build that into the loop. Um, there were some really cool things about that. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, I won't make any uh, uh, promises around what we're going to do with that yet, but we are listening to a lot of those ideas um, and it has uh, changed and kind of informed what we're thinking about what would be really cool to see in it, especially around how we get build, build more Omi uh, and token utility into it. Um, I will also put a caveat on that, that again, my side is more on the content, the VV side, anything that we that we come up with that's like gamification around Omi, it has to be run by the Akomi side and make sure that they're okay with it for a number, myriad of reasons um, that I both understand and don't because it's not my area of expertise, but it's something that we're thinking about. I mean, <laughs> yeah, good taste, yeah. 
<laughs> that's great. And you're right. Yeah, the the you know Dan and Dave always have the the final say on those things. But any way that we can keep integrating the token and, and make it more fun and more enjoyable, and you know, as I mentioned in the article that just went out. Uh, any way that we can continue to introduce new people to the token and its use, uh, we will continue to do. So I think that's, um, you know, we're really just getting started on this journey. I know we've said that for six months, but like that's nothing in the scheme of things. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe if you've got a mic sorted, you want to chat? Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, we're starting to see more NFT projects uh, being able to sort of burn their nfts and maybe get like a token in exchange or some sort of benefit uh are you guys planning to do something similar to this at all in in order to kind of increase scarcity for uh the collectibles at all no no not not to burn the collectibles that you own um that's not the kind of platform that we're we're kind of running our scarcity obviously comes from the edition numbers themselves oh, sorry I should qualify that. Users won't have the option to to destroy collectibles. But if we ever released something where we overshot and maybe released too many things, which you know is, is likely to happen at some point, um, we can retire those collectibles from circulation. So you know something might come out with twenty thousand editions, and maybe only five thousand of those sell. Um, you know, it's not going to happen within a week, but maybe they're in the store for three months or six months or something, well, then we retire the rest of them, um, never to be seen again. And and those collectibles become more rare or more scarce just as a uh, byproduct of that process. Appreciate it. No problem. Uh, who else? Victrix, you've got a question there, and I'll, uh, I'll invite some more people up. Also, guys, if you've had a question, uh, or, you know, we've had some time, just if you can return to the audience just so that I can keep an eye on things, that would be fantastic. Yeah, sure thing. I appreciate it. Um, it's been really cool seeing, you know, just the evolution of the app and, and how things are advancing with, with the entire project. I started out as just a bag holder of some Omni tokens, but you guys have kind of roped me into being a little bit of a collector also. So, Kudos, kudos on that, spending way too much money. My question is kind of actually a follow-up to something that Cryptomanic brought up earlier, um, and this is kind of more toward Trevor, I suppose. Um, the question is, is as far as the, you know, the, the bombshell DC death not having the syringe, um, you know, as far, as far as who was responsible for making that decision, you know, was it DC, you know, the licensor or, or did VV for some reason decide that, you know, the syringe, uh, didn't need to be there. I'm just kind of curious about that because if you look at the original artwork, just from like an artwork perspective, like the piece itself, um, you know, it's, it's supposed to be the, you know, a nurse of death. So like having the syringe, you look at the original statue or the original sketches by the artist really kind of adds to the to, to the presence of the artwork and and to be missing that you know that prop so to say um, really kind of uh, d detaches from it you know after you've seen the original piece um, so I'm just curious you know like like if the motivation wasn't censorship or fear that you know oh a syringe you know it's a drug paraphernalia um, like where actually did that decision be, had to be made where that wasn't included because you, you are modifying the original piece. The, the VV model, the, the death model actually still has the hand set up to be holding the syringe, but it's just kind of an odd choice. I just wondered if there was any more, uh, you, you can shed, 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 shed light on that. Um, I would say, first of all, I did not work on that piece, so I, I can't speak to that one specifically. What I will say with uh, with how this process works on a lot of the, on the stuff that I've worked on is ultimately we go through a lot of rounds. Stuff goes back and forth from us to the licensors that was, we're working on it, and it's an it's a generally a pretty organic process in terms of how these pieces develop. Where um, so where that decision comes along in the process, it's hard to say. It could be um, and and the reason for it is like the reason for it might just become like the licensor decided they didn't want it. Um, or, or we just, or it could be even like the, the way the piece came over. It just wasn't, it worked in the three, in the, uh, the like physical collectible version, but for whatever reason it couldn't, we couldn't achieve the same 
it just wasn't working in in the digital in our in our 3D because again you have to remember we aren't using although we start from that same base model um, in the case of that collectible it's it's finished in a very different way so there's a number of reasons why either practical or like a artistic choice why something would be removed um, or changed. Um, I, with that one, I doubt it's a censorship thing. That's something that I haven't seen us run into. Um, that's not to say that we won't run into those issues um, in, on like on collectibles or we have already and I'm just not aware of it. Um, but again, it's just like the read there's, it's, it's hard to say exactly what the reason is that that one was changed. Okay, well, I, I appreciate that, the insight that you have there as much as possible. Um, I just always hope, you know, especially since most of us come from the crypto sphere, you know, decentralization is important. You know, the reason that we support crypto projects or we're drawn into it for a lot of us, you know, is, is that, you know, the space really lends itself to freedom, you know, freedom of expression and financial freedom, individual freedoms, you know, not having, having to worry about being deplatformed or, you know, big tech, so to speak. So I just want to express the desire that, you know, I, I do hope that VB, if you are faced with, you know, uh, you know, choices for censorship, that you always try, you know, to fall on the side of, you know, more individual freedom and liberty uh, than not. But appreciate you guys. Thanks for taking time to answer. No worries, man. Yeah, I, I think I can definitely... Um Add to that anyway, just just to say that that is absolutely the choice that, that gets made. Obviously, with some of these sculptures, we want them to be as close to the originals or, or you know, as, as they can be. Now, a lot of the models from D, for the DC collectibles, or at least I know in the early Batman range, they come from DC, you know, that when these things were designed and sculpted by the actual artists or the, or the sculptors, you know, that's, that's not really a lot of the content that we're using or basing these collectibles off. Um, but yeah, as Trevor said, I, I don't think either of us know the answer specifically to the syringe. Maybe we can ask Dan next week because um, he should be in here. And just on that, he does apologize for not making it in here today. He and David uh, work around the clock on some big things all along. Um, but yeah, save that one in the pocket and, and we can definitely ask about it next week. He'll be able to give us some more details on that front. Awesome. Appreciate it. Uh, I've just got a community question that came in. So it's to do with the buybacks. Now, I know that certain companies, when they buy back equity, for example, they look at um, the market liquidity impact. So they don't want to cause too much volatility when they buy back equity, for example. So with Vivi, um, Ecomi, buying back Omi tokens, um, are they buying back like a fixed amount or what's the frequency of that look like? Is it kind of like randomly throughout the month or... Um, is there like some kind of underlying formula that's used to determine when to buy back and how much to buy back? Great question. Uh, I don't know if it's formulaic yet as they have just kind of started. Um, but the idea would be that, you know, so we, we take the 10% of revenue from this month, for example, and then it's purchased periodically the next month. Now, I'd, the whole idea of the buybacks other than, res, you know, reducing the circulating supply of tokens is to support the token price. Um, but, you know, we're obviously at the whims of the market there as to whether it has an effect or, or people sell into it or, or whatever. So, um, yeah, look, at the moment, I think it's just done periodically. Um, whether that's a, on a weekly basis, I'm not quite sure. Whether the specifics of that information come out, I'm also not sure because it just, we don't want to get into a situation where people just front run it every time. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe we'll save that one for Dan too. He'll uh, he'll have a bit more information about it. Cool, thank you. No problem. Uh, Dizzy, there is government. All right, anyone else here? Jump in, guys. Uh, yeah, I wanted oh. to ask a question about. Uh, I think on one of the YouTube influencers for Ecomi mentioned that you guys might not all or not transfer all of the supply to the Ethereum network. Is that true or is that something that I just misheard? Uh, it, that was something that we discussed a few weeks ago on an AMA as a, as a possibility, but Dan has said since then that no, we will, we will just move the entire system or all the wallets, all the, you know, all the tokens 
will come across with us. And then if we want to do any fun stuff later, it'll just be easier to have uh, all on the other side. So no, we won't be looking at the photos behind. And for anyone wondering when we do migrate, uh, there will be a token swap. Uh, I'll issue this one again. Please only use our official site. We'll put out plenty of information about it when the time is right. Um, but obviously, scan bots will pop up, and that transfer will be one to one. So if you have a hundred OMI now, you will have a hundred OMI on the other side on the ERC twenty. Okay. In regards to the swap, if all of my tokens are on Bitforex, do I have to send them out to a wallet to do the swap? Yes. So there will be a, okay. a swap site. Uh, I don't know what it will be called, but OMI token swap, for example. Uh, and all you will do essentially is send your tokens in and there will be, you'll enter a receiving address on the other side. Um, so you send your Go tokens in and the contract will send your ERC20 tokens out. Um, but we'll, we'll release plenty of information. I'll run some tutorials and things uh, closer to the time so everybody knows. Okay, yep, cool. And then regards to the like uh, collectible side, um, I know this is real far fetched, but is there any way that the holders themselves can be an NFT? Let's just say for family members or et cetera. Like, for example, let's just say I want to do it for my parents so they can take a picture with me if I'm traveling around the world or something. You, you mean the people themselves? <laughs> Sorry. You're... Yeah, me. Yeah, myself. You want to, you want to NFT myself? <laughs> yeah, I want, to, I want to NFT myself or like, if, you know, like a family feature. You know, like, yeah, I can take a picture with Superman, but could I, can I be scanned? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, not with VV. Uh, I don't think well, there's <laughs> any intention for that yet. <laughs> well, Reese, don't leave this money on the table that quickly. <laughs> well, that's they, well. That's why I suggested just make a you know an infinite amount of. Let's just say you go to one of the licensors and say, "Hey, let's have an infinite amount of this one, so everyone can buy it for a dollar." Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. There were look, that, yeah, like I said earlier, uh, you know, those options for lower price points and and for more accessibility will definitely be a feature. Um, but as to scanning and and NFTing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's on the roadmap at this point. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Oh, uh, just on that point okay. of a roadmap, someone did ask: um, Will be will we be getting a kind of document with the, I guess, updated roadmap anytime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the next on my list. So I wanted to get the token one out. Uh, now that we've got some development hours back in our pocket, uh, I think Dan has, has mapped out the next few things. Um, so, yeah, as soon as I can get that information together, I'll put together a – it will be VV-specific on the development, sort of, you know, what features are coming next. Um, some of you have probably seen we released one in Q1, um, which was a great idea, but got blown out with, with all the development and re-engineering that, that had to happen. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely on my list to, uh, to put out as well. Hello. 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 Can you guys hear me? Uh, okay. So, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, my question would be sort of an insider one, uh, and I think it addressed to Trevor. So, do you work with, uh, with the same 3D? artist all the time or you change i mean you work with individual ones and also like what program do you use for for the sculpting um that's a great question uh we are constantly building and exploring our our team uh we have an internal team that we built and we also have a number of uh, uh external partners that we are also working with um I, there's probably a whole rollout process for talking about who those people are that I won't get into. That's a marketing question. Um, however, what I will say about making the art, uh, it's depending on what software you use. It's either probably uh, sculpted in ZBrush, made into the proper model in Maya, 
Uh, occasionally, we'll use specialty tools. Like, for example, if we're doing like uh, highly detailed clothing or hair, we'd use something like Marvelous Designer. If we're doing something heavily, heavy on visual effects, um, that requires be something beyond like just what you can do in Unity. Maybe there will be something like Houdini involved. Uh, and, and, ge and generally, it's that's kind of, those are the kinds of tools we're working with. Um, and it's all in Unity uh, URP is the uh, like the render engine effectively that we're using for all of it. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, do you want to name drop some of the agencies we use, Trevor, or is that... Uh, is that if you're, if you're allowed to work out, work out. Yeah, I, I think some of them are right. I think people already know about um, 1518 Studios that, that was circulated. Yeah, yeah, I think we can share a couple of them. Um, they are part, uh, they are, to give you an idea of uh, what they've worked on, so before this they were working on, and by the way, what they worked on is not a reflection on what we have licenses to, I need to clarify that, just they worked on the IP. Um, so recently they worked on the Spider-Man Miles Morales game, they worked on Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, they did like tons of skins for Apex Legends, uh, they worked on Borderlands, tons of stuff. Uh, we're also working with uh, some of the Keyword Studios. Um, so Keywords is a big uh, studio organization, and probably the main studio we're working with them is called Volta. And let me pull them up really quick so I can tell you what they worked on. Yeah, if anyone wants to um, go check out that 15, 18 studios. Um, like, yeah. it's pretty insane. If you look at their the work that they do, it's this like it's, it's ex, like extremely high end AAA art. Now, just imagine those are the studios that we're working with to create like the next set of NFTs that are coming out. So we're trying to hit that quality bar that they're hitting for these huge AAA games with our NFTs. That's what we're going for. Uh, Volta, mm -hmm. scroll down. Who's who of who they've worked with? Uh, they worked with uh, Bethesda, Bioware, Bungie, Hasbro. Microsoft Studios, Riot Games, uh, Warner Brothers, Wizards of the Coast, Ubisoft. So just like pretty much everybody. Um, one of our other studios is named Noir, N-U-A-R-E. And they do, uh, they worked with a lot of Sony studios on like The Last of Us, Ghost of Tsushima, um, and a number of other projects like that. So when I said that the art team that we have is pretty stacked, it's pretty fucking stacked. <laughs> <laughs> It's about as stacked as it can get, I think. It's great. Yeah. And that's only about half the teams. There's a lot more that we're working with. Mm -hmm. All right. So it was it was really uh, inside, I don't know how to say, it, but in depth. In depth, that's the word. All right. Cheers. Thank you so much. No worries. No worries. No worries. Yeah, it's, it's great to give people some insight just into the quality that we are really building to. You know, we don't want just the best experience and the best collectibles offering. I mean, we want the best content too. You know, we want the highest quality stuff. Um, that, that's how you win the game, right? Definitely. Yeah. And these, and, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to add, like, and these studios are like, they're super excited about this space. Um, they are like, like studios. It's not just like, I mean, like these two, like like game studios fight for these resources to work with these teams because they produce such good work, and these studios are choosing to work with us because they're so excited about us and this space. So they're actually choosing like this is the where they want to be spending their time. So we're getting some really awesome teams that we get to work with on all this stuff because of that, and they want to be involved with this, and they want to do more and be more involved, which means more collectibles, higher quality collectibles, all that fun stuff. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, first off, I want to say I really appreciate everything that you guys are doing to as as you grow exponentially, and these weekly these these chats are incredible. Um, I also really appreciate how every time there has been a problem in the past that's either caused someone financial or mental stress, that you guys have always stepped up to the plate and done the right thing. Like you've always gone above and beyond. Um, I have a couple questions and I'm late coming to this, so it may have been answered already. And if so, I apologize. But uh, the most recent thing where you're 
going into people's accounts and removing collectibles and giving them a credit for the amount that they purchased it in the, in the market. Uh, I have a couple questions regarding that. Uh, one, it, it, it did happen to me, and I understand that you're getting the stolen good back to its rightful owner and you're doing the right thing. However, it definitely has affected me um, in, a, in a negative way. And so I guess my first question is, is what would have happened if I got this collectible, not from the marketplace, but I traded it with a friend or from a friend? What would, what would my compensation have been in that standpoint? Uh, the other, this part number two is when will it end? When will we know that all the stolen goods have been returned to the rightful owners and that we will, and that our collection is safe? We don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. Uh, I guess the last, the last thing is, I mean, these were, these were stolen months ago, and I'm curious as to why this has taken so long. I've, 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 I've had this collectible for over a month, just sitting in my account, and I got it for X amount. It's definitely, if I were to replace it, it's worth a lot more. And so I think being given the amount that I was, or being given back the gems that I paid for it, I feel like that's really nice. However, I think you should be giving us the option, either getting the gems back or you guys buying a, a similar serial number from the market and giving us that in return. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it was covered a bit uh, earlier and, and we'll go through it again just on that. All right. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, just to, uh, to let everybody know too, these conversations are always recorded. You can find them on Kay's YouTube channel. Kyle usually does them as well if he's around. So you can always go and, and listen back to these. So three parts to the question. I'm probably only going to remember one of them. So you'll have to ask me the others again. Um, yep, you're absolutely right. Uh, so, so all of the collectibles have now been returned first and foremost. So that, that part is done and over with. Um, it has taken quite a few months to put together all of the pieces of the puzzle because these collectibles do change hands quite frequently. Um, so Lucas and, and the support team have been working really hard to, to put that back together. Now, as you said, we, we have always found a way to, to try and make up the difference and compensate people. Now, I'll be honest in saying this doesn't, it's, it's got nothing to do with me. Um, the, the support team is handling it, but I'll absolutely raise the possibility of some form of of uh, alternative compensation. Kay brought up earlier, you know, we with the last bug that happened in the app, we figured out a way to give everyone a secret rare collectible. So maybe that becomes an option as well, but and, and, you know, there's no confirmation on that yet. So please don't hold on to it just yet. Uh, I completely agree with you that yes, you know, the value of these collectibles have risen exponentially since they were released and, and in most cases since people purchased them. Um, so yeah, returning those gems isn't, isn't necessarily just going to fix the problem. Um, but, but the best case scenario is just to reply to that email with, with your case and a bit more information uh, and, and we can take it from there. So at the moment, that's, that's the line the team had to take. And of course it was never going to be good for everybody um, because uh, like you, know yourself, you know, you weren't aware that that was a stolen collectible. Um, and obviously that, that has put you out as well. So look, we always try to make good on these things and, and we will continue to, uh, to try and implement that, that kind of stuff. But until I have more information about it, just reply to those emails and, and we'll try and, um, we'll try and fix it for everyone. Absolutely. And it comforts me greatly to know that I will, a won't purchase another one from the store that's been stolen and that B that everything in my collection now is safe. Like those two things are huge for me. And I've already replied to the email and I have no doubt that you guys are going to offer some type of, I, I feel like you guys are going to come up with a, a, a good solution that will be a win-win for everybody. So I, I appreciate it. Thanks for the time. Yeah. It's, it's always a priority of ours and, and, you know, Dan and David's especially like, we're building this for you guys, you know, and, and we want to optimize and maximize the user experience in every sense of that that word. Um, so, yeah, they, they usually make good on these things as much as we can. Uh, so, yeah, stay Hey, Reese, I have a quick question from the audience. Um, why So Serious wants to know if we will be seeing other NFTs such as music. Very good question. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think so. I think so. There's, um, 
you know, I, I can't say when or in what iteration, but we've definitely discussed things like, um, you know, maybe at some point you can add a stereo system to your showroom uh, and that can play tracks that you, uh, I guess it depends on the capacity of the NFT, whether the, the music itself is an NFT or whether it's we're licensing musicians uh, and somehow getting content from them that way. Um, but, you know, that, that w- once the digital space really starts to expand, being, you know, your capabilities in your digital space, um, all of that kind of comes into effect. I personally would love to see, um, you know, maybe you, you buy a, a platinum record collectible, you know, that, that looks like an artwork on your wall. You're in someone's showroom. They walk in and, and tap that and it starts playing a song you know, or playing that song, things like that. So, yep, um, you know, music, music licensing is, is definitely in the sights. Um, so stay tuned on that one. Awesome. Thank you. No worries. Like, uh, you know, uh, we, we kind of reiterate this all the time, but as a platform, rather than just, you know, trying to target one specific fan base or market, it, it really does give us so much opportunity and capability to access, you know, on an almost infinite amount of different markets. Um, and that's what the team will continue to strive for. Another question from the community. Uh, they want to know if Frank Kozik will be coming to the platform soon as he did tweet uh, something the other day that mentioned VB and his product. He did indeed. Yes, Frank is confirmed. Um, I, I, I thought we would put out some information <laughs> at the same time, but I think he beat us to it. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll put out information about Frank at some point uh, in the next month or two, I would think. But seeing as he has jumped the gun, yeah, Frank Kozik uh, art will certainly be on VV at some point in the near future. Awesome. I'm sure that's going to be exciting. Yeah, it's, um, we're really starting to see some of the artists roll out on top of, you know, different collectible brands and things. And, uh, and that all feeds into the artist alley as we move through the year and, and that opens up. Um, it's exciting. Yeah. Like we just spoke about, you know, it's cool to access another niche market there, right? Frank brings with him his own fan base and audience, but Vivi is really becoming a great platform to expose these artists to new audiences. You know, I don't think many people, if any, would have known who Simone Legno was, the, the Toki Doki artist. Um, but now with the Dragon Girl, almost everybody on the platform knows who he is, you know? So it's, it's a really great way for the artists themselves to build their audience. Um, and, and expose their work to new people. Uh, and it's a great way for us to, to learn more about them, uh, which is really exciting. Absolutely. Uh, I think that Vivi is a great platform for a lot of these artists to really kind of grow their brand or their names or you know, just get their, their work out there even more exposure. And uh, the fact that Vivi's a part of that and doing that is, is, I think it's extremely huge. Agreed, agreed. And, and we have quite a global audience too, you know, so, so we're talking, you know, we just had someone from Greece, uh, you know, that there's people from all over the world using the platform who just wouldn't be exposed to these artists or, or even some of these brands otherwise. Um, so yeah, it, it really is the future of, of audience building, product dissemination, um, distribution, you know, because you no longer have to package up a collectible and, send it out on trucks and boats to get all around the world or, or however it happens, you know, it, it all happens at the click of a button and the way things have happened lately, you know, within seconds. So it's, yeah, it's really exciting to be part of. I'll invite a few more people up here too, guys, but yeah, Marcel. Yeah. Marcel yeah. 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 Hi, Riz. Um, yeah, this is Mice, Mice Gaming from, from the Philippines. I have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, first, first, first. Um, once you've migrated to Immutable, uh, are the users allowed to trade um, their di- digital collectibles uh, in different marketplace that offers just like you know Binance or OpenSea or any any marketplace? Yep. Uh, so th- that's absolutely the intention, and obviously the industry is is moving in that direction. Uh, but the licensors are the ones that have the say as to whether they're okay with their IP leaving our app to be available on others. Now, I think within a few years, they all do it anyway, right? And some of them are definitely keen to go directly to to interoperability. Um, so, yes, they, they will be available, you know, almost as soon as they launch on VV. Uh, and that is a big part of the reason we're moving to Immutable as well, right? Um, 
building these things on the go 721 standard doesn't offer any interoperability because nothing works with it. Whereas moving back to Ethereum and, and onto layer two, Immutable have their own marketplace. OpenSea just announced they're integrating the Immutable protocol. Um, so as this as this space develops, as the industry develops, as our platform develops, and the licensors ultimately just get more comfortable with the idea of, of how NFTs work and trade, uh, yeah, that's, that will become available. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I got nervous. I forgot the second question. But yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh, that's it? Okay, no worries, man. We'll be back on next week if you remember it anyway. So <laughs> come on back in. Uh, I can't pronounce this combination of letters, but Tuxi Walker, is that it? If you've got a question. Or Nindo, Nindo Jr., if you want to jump in. Yes, hello. Uh, uh, thanks, VV Economy team, for your time. Um, my question is going to be, when there is only to collectible, will the 2.5% listing fee in the marketplace be paid with OMI? And what happens to this OMI? Is it removed from circulation? Yes. Yep. So it will still be paid by the, the seller if they're accepting OMI as payment. And that 2.5% will go straight to the burn wallet. So it actually starts to burn... Uh, from the circulating supply at that point instead of just from the reserve. All right, sounds good. Yeah, once uh, once that's really up and running, I mean, the, the market already sees obviously way higher transactional volume than the store, people trading back and forth. I think you can see those active burns already. Um, it's going to be pretty, pretty good. You know, we return the utility to the token, uh, just by the nature of the transactions, it becomes more scarce in circulating supply. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to the second half of this year. I I just want to like make sure that when you say OMI to collectible, I'll be able to put my personal OMI from my wallets into the app and use it to purchase. And also, will there ever be a way for um, buying OMI from exchanges directly through the VV app using fiat? Yes to both, yeah. So yes, you, uh, you'll have full control over your OMI and OMI wallets within the app. Now, uh, Apple users still have to use the wallet, I believe, um, but, but that's pretty simple. Uh, the web platform itself should be live within, or at least the first iteration um, within a month or two anyway. So by the time that we've moved to immutable you'll be able to use the web platform in the same way you do the, the phone app. And yes, the intention with the, the MPL, um, you know, in, in the not too distant future, hopefully is, is that users, users can definitely, sorry guys, do you want to just mute your mic if there's a bit of a back noise there? Um, yeah, with the MTL, the intention is, you know, if I'm a non crypto user, and I see something in the market and it's only listed in OMI, but I have no idea what that is or, or how to do it. We absolutely want to enable a way that you can still buy it using your credit card. And what, it, what that is doing is facilitating an OMI purchase. Um, so yeah, that, that will be available at some point as well. Ooh, I have a question. Uh, thanks. Yeah, jump in. Whoever's voice I just heard. All right, cool. Yeah, this is Wulu. Um, yeah, I'm a collector. I've been holding Omi for a while, and you know, I've been kind of coming in for the gamer side of the aspect. I'm a, you know, I like DC and stuff and superheroes, but I like the video games, man. I like Pac Man and Sonic, Super Mario, all of that. So, kind of like my question is, uh, you know, when Big Three, as far as like Nintendo, Microsoft, and um, Sony, you know, when can we get any? kind of information on any games. I know we had kind of like Street Fighter, um, one of the fighting games in the white paper. So I know they're in the works. So, you know, with the whole gamification, I know that's in the aspects of, um, you know, points within the app and making the app kind of a game itself. Um, when are we going to get video, video game re representation on here? Yeah, probably, uh, probably sooner than later. Um, there's definitely gaming licenses that we've acquired. I can't really give you more details on that yet, purely because of the 
called the NDAs and restrictions we're under. Um, and just on that, you know, that obviously the we, we are requiring those licenses to use the IP in the same or similar manner that we, we are now. You know, we, we will reproduce or, or make their content available as collectibles or, or things like that. Um, you guys obviously are aware that we have Monster Hunter as a license, uh, Iceborne and... Uh, I think there's another version of it, you know, whatever the other one is. Um, so those kind of in-game characters, Falcana, those assets are, are in development um, and will roll out at some point. So there's definitely gaming representation. Uh, it is one of our product verticals uh, and, and we'll continue to see more of that as we progress as well. Hey, right, cool, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for, um, you know, being a good community and having this open communication like that it means a lot. You know, to all the new people coming in, people that have been investing. And I know it means a lot to you guys, too. So I just want to say thanks. No worries, man. We appreciate it. And uh, thanks for being here. And, yeah, someone just said Monster Hunter World. Thank you for, uh, for putting that in there as well. I think uh, Monster Hunter, it's a pretty massive game, right? I'm, I'm not personally a gamer on that front. Trevor, maybe you've played it or Noah. I know you guys are both gamers, but I think I saw they sell you know, 50, 60. It's a pretty big game. It's a pretty big game, yeah. Is PC or console or both? Uh, World has the expansion, which was Iceborne. Um, and then Monster Hunter Rise is kind of less open world, more kind of MMORPG on the uh, Nintendo Switch. So I've got Rise, but uh, some of my friends who have uh, World and Iceborne, um, that's like the proper open world one. Right. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah, have. I'd say World is more of a mainstream Monster Hunter, but they, they have different Monster Hunters for different audiences. Um, yeah, great, great franchise. Though. I haven't played a bunch of it personally, but um, I know it's super popular. Nuts. Yeah, I saw it uh, advertised on a bus stop not that long ago. That's how I knew it was a big deal. I got a question for you, Reese. <laughs> Go for it. So from one aviation enthusiast and pilot to another, is there a possibility in the future we might see some uh, light just from or put our ones? <laughs> I'd love to see it. I'd love to uh, to get some little AR spins going. But um, look, I don't think it's I don't think it's really in the uh, the awareness at this stage. Um, definitely going after more of the uh pop culture fan culture style things uh but yeah i'll, I'll suggest it I'd, I'd love to be able to do it fly fly to you. i would yeah. too <laughs> us pilots are die hard yeah, that's it we just collect things that are really expensive <laughs> absolutely <laughs> thanks man. thank you for your time no worries uh the doma if you're in here you want to hit us yeah, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, man. Hey, thanks, uh, first of all, for all you guys do. It's pretty awesome that you guys do this, these little community events and stuff and answer questions. So it's really cool to hear from you guys, and the platform is just unbelievable. As you can tell, everybody's pretty addicted to it. Uh, I had, And excuse me, I, I came in a little bit late, so hopefully you didn't already answer this. But um, you guys have changed on the um, – when you buy a collectible, you can't see any longer the uh, – the price that you paid for it and some of that information kind of disappeared. Is that going to come back or is that some, something to that? To that? Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. I think, correct me if I'm wrong. Can you go into the, your transaction history and see it? Yeah, there? but I got or a lot of, going from there? yeah, but I got a lot of transactions. So you got to like scan yeah. <laughs> yeah. quite a bit of quite things to find out. Find out what that was. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, look, I, I've definitely seen a few people mention that in the last few days. I think maybe Trevor has already brought it up with the team or Lucas or someone. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll put it forward again. So, same deal, you Brian. Any, any changes we make, if they make it more inconvenient for people, we definitely want to fix that. There is also, um, I, I think maybe that might be rebuilt with the appraisal section of the, um, of the you know, we, we used to have like it would, kind of give you whether your value had increased or decreased on, on your holdings or on your collectible. So I think that that will feature again once it's rebuilt. Um, so it might be part of that, but I'll, I'll put it forward for sure. That's great. Thank you. And then uh, when's the ghost trap come out? <laughs> <laughs> great question. Uh, I would love to tell you, but 
We'll find out. No. Yeah. I didn't it's think us. so, but I thought I'd try. It's us. Hello? Hello? What the fuck? <laughs> Have you got the microphone? You might need to enable push to talk if you're, uh, if you're new to this. Hi, I am new to this. Can you hear me? Yep, we've got you now. Uh, okay, hey guys, uh, it's Duke Skywalker uh, for Reese. That's How's perfect. It going? Good. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, thanks for all the work you guys do. I love the app. Um, you know, all those things people say. Uh, I have a couple things. Do you, th do you guys think about, uh, <clears throat> do you think uh, movable, posable um, things like interactive, like the DeLorean? <clears throat> could be on NFTs. Sorry, I'm reading from my notes. Um, like, I was looking at the bombshells, and I'm really excited for tomorrow's drop. Uh, Barda and Starfire are, are two of my favorites. And uh, I was digging into the bombshells physicals, and they have um, uh, the uh, scarf of Killer Frost can be movable. <clears throat> There's also, like, a metal Batman uh sculpture that can you can move his head with a magnet which sounds really cool is there anything like interactivity we could see with like movable posable uh uh 3d sculptures trevor short answer is yes i'm figuring uh, it's something that we, we totally could do um it's something we would have to figure out um, how to build it and then build that interactivity um, because ultimately, I mean, the nice thing about a movable sculpture in the real world is you just grab it and move it. You can't really just grab and move a digital sculpture like that, so we'd have to figure out how to build that. But yeah, that is something that could definitely be done. Yeah, I think it would yeah, be cool maybe, uh, maybe just for special items mm -hmm. like that, like if the physicals had them or something. I was, uh, and also uh, NFTs that unlock other NFTs. Like uh, there's a lot of crypto artists that will do drops that you can get if you uh, are holding one of their other pieces. Just wondering if you guys have uh, considered that kind of stuff or uh, Catwoman safe or eggs. I was thinking Catwoman safe as soon as you said that. Yeah, um, I think what you're hinting at again is something like that is also something we've like thought about. Um, it's like I, I put that in the category of like gamification around the NFT. So it's definitely something that we put a lot of, that we do spend a lot of time thinking about and we're thinking of like what kind of systems we could build around that in order to make um, collecting and trading and interacting with the NFTs more fun. So um, I, again, won't, I won't give specifics, but it is like we are thinking of stuff very much along that line of interacting with the NFTs. Um, also, Reese, I'm sorry, I have to jump off right now. But thanks. No worries. <laughs> thanks for being here, mate. And, um, and hopefully we catch up again soon. But I uh, really appreciate it. Um, and I, I will just add to that in terms of, you know, you mentioned um, other artists on NFT platforms doing like unlockable NFTs or, or whatever. I think if we, we are to see something in that iteration on VV, it will be more like, um, you know, maybe you have a complete set of Batmans uh, and that gives you access to a Batman specific accessory or showroom or you know we, we can really add things in that way because that way the i guess the, the unlockables if we want to call them that are actually tailored to the people who are fans of that particular brand or collectible you know there's no point if you're if you're a massive superman fan but you don't really care for batman there's no point giving you batman specific showroom items or all that kind of thing um so I think that if there's any sort of unlockable content to come, it will be in that sort of capacity. Hey guys, I had a question for Noah, if that's okay. Yeah, go for it. Noah's still here, I believe. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so I have a bit of a background in marketing myself, and I was just wondering uh, in terms of uh, influencer marketing, obviously we've had uh, a big name in Logan Paul uh, mentioned Omi before, and he's obviously a collector as well. If you've seen his most recent fight, he was ro rocking that uh, Charizard chain. So I'm just wondering if uh, that's something that you're willing to explore in the future, because it almost seems like a no-brainer to me 
uh, that, you know, put a, B- a VB collectible in one of his videos, like on Instagram, or TikTok, um, is, is kind of like, a, yeah, like I said, like a no brainer to me in terms of getting exposure. So is that, is that something that you guys are considering or uh, thinking about? Yeah, so I mean, there are a lot of influencers um, and people who have sent us messages even on our social platforms of, you know, different people who would be great to sort of work with um, who are collectors in different regions and different spaces. Um, so I, I think those are definitely opportunities that would be great to explore, um, you know, as we continue to go forward. Um, in terms of Logan Paul in particular, um, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't seen that, so that's that's good to know. I know certain people, um, it'll depend on their own audiences and, uh, you know, if, if they would be good to bring over to ours and, you know, how, how all of that will kind of factor in. But, um, yeah, I think it's it's definitely great to start looking at influencer stuff um, in the future. Right now, I, I would say um, I, I love the stuff the our own community with YouTube um, creators and everything, all those people are doing. Um, it's great exposure for the brand. Um, but I would say we don't need uh, huge influencers as much like at the moment, um, particularly because, you know, stuff is already uh, sort of selling out so quickly. Um, but, you know, I, I think as as we continue to grow and scale, um, that stuff will, you know, working with bigger influencers will definitely be be great. So, yeah, thanks for that question. That's good. Got it. Yeah, no, I, I know that was like before your time. So I just wanted to make sure that you were aware that that actually happened. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, sounds good. Yeah, that's a really good point to bring up, actually. And just just to that, you know, with, with each brand and and each series within each brand, you know, we can really target influencers or fans in so many different avenues and channels and, and all that kind of thing. So yeah, that that awareness can really just spread out like a bit of a web. That's- hey, Risa, we've got a question from the audience from Larnicus. Yep. Are the licenses exclusively timed NFT slash ask functionality play into renegotiating the licenses? Also, does it or does um, so mo- moving them to other marketplaces? No, that that doesn't really have anything to do with the the contractual obligations of the licensing deal. Um, if the licenses are okay with it, then cool. But most of our, to, to answer the first part, so I think most of our licensing deals range anywhere between two to six years, maybe longer, depending on, on the brand before they would get renegotiated. Um, can you read the question again for me? Sorry. Sure. Um, it says, the licenses exclusively are the licenses exclusively time sensitive, or does NFT slash app functionality play into renegotiate renegotiating licenses? And the second part was moving the NFT from VV to OpenSea or any other market play into those negotiations. Also, yeah. Does- yeah. Okay. Sweet. So I think we covered the second part. Uh, no, I think in, if we're talking renegotiations at any point, um, it's not so much app functionality and things as it is revenue. Right. These are licensing companies. Uh, they are obviously earning a royalty from from everything we sell. And you know, compared to to trying to dis- sell and distribute a product in the real world or in the physical world, I should say, uh, you know, for for something like this to be created, you, obviously all the design work that goes into it, then the physical production and manufacture, then the logistics and distribution to get it all around the world. You know, so, so if if they were to mint ten thousand or, or produce 10,000 Batman sculptures. It might take a year to sell those in gaming stores or hobby stores around the world. Uh, and then the licensing company collects their fee on top. Um, whereas with us, we are truly, I mean, we're creating an industry around us, but we're changing the way that licensors perceive that that model. Um, obviously from the green narrative, but like there is no other there's no gaming store or no other distribution model that can sell 10,000 units of a product in two seconds and have it delivered around the world in five minutes, you know? Um, so we're in a very, very strong position and a very, you know, our licensors thus far are very content with the, uh, the way we're going about things. Hopefully that gives some insight into that question. Absolutely. Thank you. 
Hey, yo. Go for it. Hey, uh, I had a few questions. Um, one of them is, uh, and this this is a van. I'll just for sure put van. Can you feel me? Uh, how you guys doing today? Good, man. Good. Welcome. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. One of my questions was, um, are you guys developing a feature where we could, like, in a secondary market, sell, like, a whole collection of our collectibles, like, let's say the raw English drop, like, we could sell all, if we acquired the whole collection, will we be able to sell it as, like, one collection to people? Yeah. Yeah, we absolutely are. Okay. Yeah, that's what's up. Um, another one of my questions was, and you kind of sort of touched on it and answered it a bit with the uh, appraisal value, uh, because I know on all the collectibles, like in the secondary market, they the mo pretty much mostly went up. Only a few went down. Um, as that feature feature rolls out, uh, how would what's the basis of like? changing the uh, appraisal value like how would y'all measure that would y'all measure it off like secondary sales and kind of balance it out and uh, find like the average uh, price appraisal price or yeah yeah I think the way it was designed uh, originally and, and I don't know what happened for it to not be available at the moment but it would take the average of the 10 previous sales of that collectible and mm -hmm. whatever the price was, was that would be your kind of benchmark I suppose is the easiest way to say it. Okay, and uh, I, I got I wrote down like a lot of different questions, but I ain't gonna blow y'all with all of them. But uh, another one was uh, I know you guys touched on um, having like exclusive drops where you are like it'll be like probably one drop and things like that. Uh, I, I just was wondering like would y'all do like an auction style drop? So like y'all drop a one of a can and then. Just people will get a chance to bid on it. And I guess really the people with the steepest pockets will be able to um, grab that collectible. Yeah, yeah. We've definitely discussed different ways of doing things um, because there will be one of ones at some point. You know, a lot of artists will release some one of ones. Uh, Ron English, when that Rabbit Grin collectible comes out. So there's obviously the digital version, but then you know, the lucky 100 people or 200 people will take physical delivery of the actual sculpture. Um, so we, we really need to try to, to figure out a way that, that we can do that in the most fair capacity, whether that maybe we do some sort of lottery style system for drops like that. Maybe some do just go to auction and whoever really wants that piece has the opportunity to buy it. Um, I'm inclined to say with one of ones, if it's a, an, artist specific release that might be the case almost like like a christie's auction or something like that um so yeah there, there will be different different release mechanisms uh, depending on the drop okay yeah that sounds good um a lot of these other questions i know they kind of like far out there for example like um having like the actual VV platform like on PlayStation or Xbox and you being able to access your collectibles in even that manner and like, you know, uh, as y'all roll out and this far ahead because I know the technology got to really be built up for it, um, but like being able to, you know, use that gaming, um, whatever gaming features comes out on the VV platform on like different systems like a Sony system or, you know, a Microsoft system. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, any cross console stuff, we're not there yet, right? And, and that will come <laughs> if, if it happens, you know, later. But uh, the web platform really, really opens us up to a lot more capability. Um, and Dan's spoken to it. I haven't seen it yet, but the first iteration is is what you see in the app, but in a web browser. Um, so that opens us to more audiences. But then I guess you can access that anywhere you can access a browser, right? So like, theoretically. Right. You could do that on a console. Um, the VV verse obviously will build out on on the web as well. Um, yeah, yeah I, I can't really speak to whether we'll we'll end up with some stuff on Sony or or something like that, but I'd love to see it. I think yeah, the more, that, yeah, yeah. Um, the, more place, the better. I'll take one more from you, man. If you got one, and then we'll uh, open the yeah, floor. Yeah, I don't want to take up all your time. Um... The rest of my is pretty out there. It ain't nothing that you could really give a definitive answer about. 
Um, so I'm just ended with this. Uh, I'm real bullish on uh, the whole technology and the developing the technology in the world. And personally, I think you guys are giving so much value because I know technology coming from like Apple and just everything is developing. So like people could literally come out and have digital picture frames where we can actually take the collectibles off our VV platform and have it in our living room, moving around on a picture frame, you know what I'm saying? Just like, kind of like putting it on a nano ledger or something, but instead it's on a picture frame. And, you know, when people come into your home, they see this rare collectible, which is only probably like a thousand of them available, and you have it and it's moving around in your living room. It, that Like, technology is moving to that way, and I know we got the capability to keep pushing it towards that. And you guys are... Technology is, is developed around the artists, and you guys are creating this technology and really bringing, like, leading forward in the new age of technology, and I appreciate that. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Just, to, just to paint that picture a little bit, too, outside of, you know, the picture frame and, and things like that, we're really building for a wearable future, you know, and, and I don't think we're that far away from Apple or someone bringing out consumer-friendly AR glasses, right? augmented reality glasses. Now, in the next five or 10 years, I, I think AR glasses replace phones. You know, I think phones become a bit redundant. Um, and in that, in that digital world, you know, or at least digitally, digitally enhanced world, we are going to be the providers of that premium digital content. You know, so we, we've talked about if you're wearing AR glasses and you walk into someone's lounge room, well, then you can see their artworks pinned to the wall. You know, maybe we get to a point where there's no TVs anymore because the Netflix app is just pinned to your wall as well. And anyone wearing AR glasses can see that, right? So that really opens up so much more uh, interactivity because you can use gestures with that kind of technology. The same way you swipe your fingers on your phone now, your, your, AR enhanced world will react to your gestures. Um, and it just creates a much more immersive world, right? Like you can, I, I would love to, mm -hmm. I'd love to run some promos. You walk, you know, you're in the main part of your city and you can see a giant Batman floating above the Golden Gate Bridge or something. And you walk <laughs> that should be crazy. Yeah, yeah like it's, it, it's, we're going to get there, right? I, I don't know how long it takes, mm -hmm. but that's where the technology goes and, um, and we'll be there, so. It's gonna be crazy to yeah. see. Yeah, like I said, man, that's what's up, and that's why I said like y'all offering so much value for like the future. Right now, it may be small, but man, yeah. the way technology moving, it's gonna really be big in the long term. That's why I'm here to stay for a long time, and probably won't be leaving. <laughs> All right, nice. uh, happy to have you. Thanks, bro. All right. Easy. All right, guys, we'll take a few more from the floor. We've probably got another 15 minutes to go. So if anyone hasn't had a chance to come up, if you want to drop a question in our text channel, there's a voice chat text channel, and uh, some of the mods will we'll keep an eye on that too. Uh, quick question, quick question. Quick question, real quick, real quick. Um, after the swap, total supply continue to be $750 million or when it reflects on uh, the market, uh, CMC and uh, CoinGecko and such. All right, man, you, you just cut out for a second there. I got total supply, uh, we'll reflect. Okay, yeah. All right, can you hear me now? Okay, so um, the total supply of OMI after the swap, will it continue to be 750 billion or will it be reduced? Yeah, good question, actually. I'll, uh, I'll have to confirm. Um, Obviously, there's 97 billion or thereabouts locked in smart contracts. We've already burnt 6 billion. Um, I'll, I'll just have to confirm yeah, whether we, we do then leave those behind and, and we start from the, the swap date or if everything comes across and then stays the same in the wallets. I guess it just depends on how the system is tied into those wallets as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get some information on that for you. Cool, thanks. Uh, I have a quick question from the audience. Uh, uh, they want to know what your, your thoughts, thoughts are, are on the... Sorry, man, just cut out my thoughts on what, sir? A question from the audience regarding the Toki Doki drop tomorrow on Binance. 
Um, they just want to know your thoughts on that uh, being a shared IP. With yeah, yeah, I did say that. Uh, no real thoughts, to be honest. I mean, these are that's how these companies work and build their brand awareness. Um, Tokidoki, that's kind of what they do. They do a lot of collaborations. Um, I think they've done some with like Onitsuka Tiger. Hang on, I'm going to look at the blog because I've written a uh, article about this. Uh, give me one sec. This uh, there is a brand showcase available on um, on the Akomi blog actually with Tokidoki. But this is yeah part of what they do in, in terms of trying to build their their awareness. So here you go. So Tokidoki have done collaborations with Dim Mac, which is Steve Aoki's record label, uh, Onitsuka Tiger, the shoes. Cartel, Barbie, Sanrio, Hello Kitty, Marvel, Peanuts, Overwatch, Le Sports Sack. Um, so it's a very normal thing, you know, for, for licensing companies to, to branch out. Now, whatever they're releasing, I think I saw their mystery boxes. Someone can correct me on that. Um, but it will obviously be different content to what is available on VV and presumably in a different format. It might just be 2D stuff. Um, I'm really not sure. I guess no one will be sure until they release. But congrats to Toki Doki. You know, I don't, there's no like, yeah, there's no spot or ill will there. It's a great move for a company to make. Awesome. Thank you. Question. Uh, another... if, um, um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you guys uh, have, have if, it, if this has already been mentioned or not, but uh, roughly when would the uh, transfer to Immutable begin? And like, uh, kind of expected to be done. Is that something that would happen this year, or possibly in the into next year? Oh, it's way earlier than next year. <laughs> yeah, it's being done now. Um, you know, or mapped out and built. Uh, I hate to put dates to things because you know, obviously, development is development. But I think best case scenario, it, it all starts to take place by the end of next month. Um, and if not, I think we'll be fully across by sometime in August. Um, so call it. Oh the end. wow. Call it the end of August. Amazing. Thank Sorry. you so much. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, just so that everybody's aware, like that's top priority for us, right? Because we need to move there before we can enable the OMI transactions, uh, which obviously returning that utility to OMI is a huge priority. Um, so that's that's absolutely what's taking place behind the scenes now. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I love the project. Uh I'm an uh, Omi holder and uh, and collector. Absolutely love what you guys are doing. Been telling everybody about it. Thank you, guys. Uh, great community. Thank you, man. We appreciate it. Mr. Poor Man, welcome up. It's been a while, my friend. Oh. Uh-huh. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you, mate. You drinking beers? Or- oh, I'm I'm drinking uh, Woodford Reserve tonight, buddy. That's That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you got some questions for us, man, or just tuning in? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, first, I want to say I appreciate everything you're doing for the community. Uh, I believe my investment is in the right hands. Uh, every night I go to bed, I look at your picture on Twitter. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, so it's a question about Ecomi. Like, we don't know much about Ecomi. Could you maybe run, give us the rundown? Like, who is the C- CEO of Ecomi? How did y'all meet with Vivi? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so same structure, right? Ecomi is the parent company of Vivi. Um, so when we first started four years ago, thereabouts, um, and the first product was the secure wallet, uh, we, we really started with, well, actually we started with Orbis, um, but then there was another company that had that name and created a token around it or, or something. So we moved, we went to Ecomi, launched the secure wallet, uh, and then as we started to develop VV, which was then called Ecomi Collect, um, just as a placeholder name. It, it just became better from a structural standpoint to have that as a subsidiary company. Um, and, and it really has become a standalone kind of product and company anyway. But from a technical standpoint, Ecomi is the company, VV is the product. Uh, so the CEO is David Yu. Um, that guy's an absolute machine, man. I think he's a CEO of like 15 or 16 other companies that he started Still owns Vagabond Games, um, Games R Us in New Zealand, you know, some of the biggest hobby and gaming stores in in Australasia. Um, yeah, so he's still the CEO. Dan is the COO of both, I guess is the easiest way to, to put it. 
Um, and now as we develop, we're, we're starting to distinguish the brands. So everything you've, you've probably noticed on the Akomi Twitter now, obviously I retweet a lot of VV stuff, but we don't mention any exchange stuff or token stuff on the VV side because that is mu- it's much more targeted to a user and fan base kind of crowd as opposed to, you know, the crypto crowd. So that's kind of how we distinguish between them. Uh, and the same with the conversations, you know, the discord is much more for VV than it is Omi. Um, but fundamentally it's, it's one of the same. Oh, okay. I, I appreciate that, buddy. I really do. Yeah, no worries, man. Oh, oh one more question. I almost forgot. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, in the future, could we possibly see a Britney Spears NFT? <laughs> Any <laughs> any particular reason for this NFT? I'm a Britney Spears fan, you know. <laughs> That's a lot. That's fair. That's fair. Look, I'll suggest it. <laughs> I'd like to see a upside down Bevo, uh, a poor man printing NFT. <laughs> hey, I like that. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll try to accommodate everyone, man. All right, buddy. I appreciate it. Hey guys, quick questions. I appreciate everything you guys do. Cheers, man. Uh, any update on the collectible hardware wallet? Yeah, it's it's being manufactured. Uh, I think David mentioned in our AMA last week or two weeks ago, we're waiting on some, um, some of the, the dry packaging and stuff to come in as well. But what we've actually been doing in the background is, is redeveloping the secure wallet app as well, uh, make it much more user-friendly. Once we started developing VV, that kind of went on the back burner. Um, and we're about to start testing that app. Now, what they want to do before we make the next batch of wallets available is uh, update the firmware on all of them. So they need to be manufactured, then we update the firmware. Because at the moment, or at least before they were sold out, you received the wallet and straight away you had to update the firmware uh, some of them had obviously been sitting in the warehouse for a bit too long or something. And it just created a lot of issues really uh, with that connectivity. Um, so, so the intention is you know, we'll test the app, make sure that that's all good to go, update the firmware on the cards, then they'll be made available. Um, so look, I'm hoping they're, they're back on within the next month or two. But just so that you know, at the moment, they can't store VV NFTs until that is enabled to send them off um, you know, out of VV. Um, so they can... Yeah, interoperability. Yeah, yeah. So they do store ERC721 uh, NFTs, you know, any sort of Ethereum-based NFT, all your, all your large caps, Bitcoin, Litecoin, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, OMI, uh, I think it stores Binance as well, BNB, just just the token, not not Binance chain at this point. Um, but once all of these kind of things are done, then, then development will, will kick back off on the secure wallet too to make that a much more user-friendly wallet as well. So stay tuned on that one. As soon as I have more info, I'll, I'll put it in the announcement channel. Awesome. I appreciate the thoroughness and making sure that the product's proper before you guys release it. It obviously is going to be a huge help to the community. Um, curious about the Omi wallet on iPhones. Is it possible or should we just wait for the web platform? Yeah, web platform. So you, you it's available now with, is it omi.vv.me? Um, you can log in. I see Android users with it. It's just first time yeah. I ever wanted an Android phone over iPhone. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Uh, uh, yeah, look, that's just a that was a stipulation. Um, but Apple, Apple, you know what they these companies are like. They don't want you to have any sort of option to buy things that that isn't making them money, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Or, yeah, so uh, that's why it's kind of on the web platform. And really, once the web platform's available, that that I think that will become more of a go-to platform you know it'll be more robust as it develops out we have more um, more abilities there because you don't have to optimize everything to a lower resolution for phones and all that kind of thing so yeah once it's available it'll be much easier for everybody to have access awesome thank you uh last question uh i appreciate everything you guys do you're incredibly awesome thank you but uh what are you most excited about in the coming month besides comic-con uh, me personally, I mean, I think Comic Con's going to be pretty awesome. Like I said earlier, that that for me feels like we're actually launching the product. You know, we're, we we have got this far just from word of mouth, which has been incredible. But it'll be nice to actually take it to an event, um, 
put the product in front of a lot of new people. Now the app is ready to actually onboard new users and, and introduce people to that experience. So, you know, in, in the very short term, I'm excited for that. Past that, version two of the showroom, I'm really excited for. Um, I've only seen a few renders, probably the same that you guys have seen, but already it just looks infinitely more detailed and, and better than it currently does. And the accessories, you know, I'm, I'm really like some of the showrooms that I see floating around on Twitter blow me away. Like I've seen the DeLorean, people using the DeLorean fins as shelving, the Gavinci drop that went out, you know, I've seen now that it looks like a nightclub in a showroom. There's like disco lounges and things going on. Um, so the creativity we've already seen is, is incredible, but I, I think opening those, that customization up with accessories is, is going to be pretty incredible to see too. Um, Noah, if you're still here, is, is there anything you're particularly looking forward to that you've, you've come across lately? Yeah, I mean, what you were saying about the creativity, particularly on, on social media, um, yeah, I mean, just in the past few weeks I've been here, I've seen so many crazy things the community have made, you know, particularly with showrooms and, um, you know, just the way people can rotate things and, uh, you know, use all of the, the features of the app to really um, do some really cool stuff. It's it's awesome to see. Um, yeah, in terms of things I'm excited about, I think you, you kind of covered most of them. But, yeah, I mean, definitely some exciting things coming um, as well, but can't talk about it yet, so... Uh, yeah, I guess stay tuned on on that front. I at least have to try. Yeah, you guys have a good one. Cheers. All right, guys, we'll do a few more and then uh, better wrap it up. I'm trying to sell my car today so I can buy some more Omi. So <laughs> we'll take a few. Hey, guys. Really quick question. I got a quick question. Yeah, sorry. I'll probably structure this a little more. Let's go Goody and then Pasmanian and then OMWTFYB. I really need <laughs> Let's go that. Then me? Yep. Thanks. So, Goody, if you're there. Yeah. Oh, we can't quite hear you there, mate. You might have to, um, might have to hold push to talk, maybe, or... All right, we'll come back to you, mate. That's, that's no stress. Uh, Who do we say next? I'm not sure, but I'll go if anyone's, uh, you know, waiting or not waiting. Do it. Yep. All right, so I have a quick question in regards to um, the actual... What do you think the best way to move Give me two seconds. Isn't it? All right, I'm sorry. So how long does it take to acquire a license from start to finish? Depends on the license. Um, but in most cases, these deals have been in progress for two years or thereabouts. Um, initially, it was probably harder uh, purely because we were trying to educate licensors fundamentally about this this space because no one knew what an nft was um and really to you, you know that you're trying to show them the vision a lot of the time before the app was really built and 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 you know so so over that couple of years dan and david were just relentless in their pursuit of these guys and these licenses would go back every few months show them the progress expand on the ideas um re really try to really try to show them sort of what we saw this becoming um, and credit to those early licensors, you know, Toki Toki and stuff that, that came on with us early um, because it, that's really helped us now. Right. And then as the, as time progressed and they went back to these licensors, well, each time they could go back and say, Oh, well, you know, DC just signed or this company just signed or, or whatever. Right. And, and we really started to hit this critical mass point where it became very obvious to the licensors that they were going to lose an opportunity if they didn't sign on. So yeah, a lot of them have been in the works for, for, you know, quite a long time. Once the product launched and NFTs got really hot, you know, this year, especially like we're signing new licenses all the time now. Um, but the initial agreements don't take 
that long, then it has to go through all of the legal and all of the other stuff before it can actually come to fruition. Then it obviously goes into production and, and assets and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, hopefully that gives you some insight into the actual licensing side. Yeah, it does, because I know you guys have a dozen or so licenses at any time continuously going on. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and more and more artists and more and more companies really these companies are going to fall behind if they don't figure out how to get into the digital space. And right now we're the golden boys of the digital space. You know, we are one of the only got companies or, or products that is live, has a working, you know, a user base, has figured out a way to leverage all of these new technologies in a very easy to use and understand format. Uh, one that is comfortable for the mainstream as well. You know, there's no, keys or wallets or crypto stuff that, that people have to be aware of to be able to interact. Um, so, you know, and, and, and we do it very intentionally that way. Right? That's always been part of the design. Um, and it's, it's really started to pay off uh, now that we're live. So. Okay, perfect. And one last question I have for you is, um, I know that you guys have mentioned being the Netflix of NFTs in this I do believe that firmly. I just want to know what tactics do you guys have to beat out the competition that will be coming besides the VV verse? Uh, look, I think there's plenty of plenty of ways to keep people engaged and interested. Um, obviously, licensing or acquiring the licenses has been the main value driver for those things, right? And, and because these deals take so long to establish and we've been doing it for so long, we already know that the vast majority of licenses we have won't be available anywhere else, right? Or, or at least not in, in the capacity that we use them and not anytime soon. Um, so that's a huge thing. That's a huge thing. Being, well, technically we're not first to market, but being first to market with this kind of licensed branded product is also a, a huge um, advantage to us. Uh, the VVverse obviously adds layers to, to the system, opening up the economy so that you can trade in and out of gems, in and out of fiat, uh, because we really do envision a day that, that people can make a living off VV, right? You, you can be a collector or a flipper or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, so, so all of those value drivers and value propositions are going to continue to layer in. Plus, you add in app retention strategies, gamification, the master collector, um, yeah, yeah, there, there's plenty of things to layer in. And then you add in the new technologies like wearables and, and being built for that. Eventually, uh, collectibles actually become digital toys, right? And you've already kind of seen previews of the drivable DeLorean. Uh, so we, we build in extra utility for the collectibles as well. So I think all of those things will feed into uh, the ongoing success of the platform. Okay, thank you so much. I last question would be uh what is the retention rate for these current VV users? I know we're at like, you know, 350, but I know that there has been a lot of FUD and possibly people leaving. Uh I I'll have to confirm the numbers, um but it's it's actually pretty exceptional for for an app and for such an early stage app, um, you know, a lot of the FUD that we see comes from the OMI side because people are frustrated about an investment that they chose to make. Um, whereas the users of the platform, you know, like a, a lot of people that use VV, like you, you can use that without, without even, you know, you don't need to be in the Telegram group to, to interact with the app or anything like that. Um, so the retention rate is exceptional, but I don't have an exact figure on it. No worries. Thank you. Take care, guys. No worries. We've got a few more guys to take these. Um, so, Goody, if you've sorted your microphone, and then Jess85, I know you are up here before. We didn't get one out. So we'll hey, can you hear me? Yep. Hey, I just want to say thank you guys for the great content that you guys um, provide. And, you know, I went from the the fiance that was always getting mad at my fiance for <laughs> spending so much money and collecting these NFTs to actually being a collector myself. And, you know, the tables have turned. Um, and now I'm a Omi collector, I'm a holder. Um, but my question is, will there be some kind of way, like in the future, to be able to view the um, on our feed? 
to, to view the what, sorry, the collectibles? To view, you know, our posts on, on, on the feed? Uh, yeah, you should be able to do that now. Maybe someone can correct well, me on that. You know, the notifications don't allow me to do that. And that's why I'm asking. I'm wondering if it's going to be like, you know, how Facebook and Instagram are. You're able to go back and look at your um, your posts. Uh, I see. Yeah, you mean like an individualized feed as opposed to just the collective, the collective feed. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's not going to happen in the next couple of weeks. Um, but once the VVverse really develops... I think there's going to be ways to go straight to your friends' profiles and your friends' showrooms, things like that. Um, whether it becomes a, a personalized feed of your posts or, you know, almost like a Facebook-esque thing, I'm not sure. Um, but if it makes sense for, for the user base and for the platform uh, and the community to engage with each other, then, yeah, we'll absolutely build that in. Perfect. I think, I think the first feature is... Uh, just moving in that direction would be more of a messenger style system so that you can contact other collectors as well. All right, a couple more. Yeah, Hasmanian, go for it, mate. Awesome, thank you. Um, I just had a quick question about uh, gems on Android. Uh, up here in Canada, there's a limit. I can only do 350 gems at a time max. Uh, is there a workaround for that? Um, I'm sure you can do as many gems as you want when KYC gets here, but you know, it's just kind of annoying topping up 10 times to buy a Rizzo, you know what I mean? Yeah, agreed, yeah. I actually think that that's a, an app store uh, limitation because there's probably not that many apps where you would spend $350 in, in multiple transactions or, or whatever. Um, yeah, I think once the web platform builds out, we have so much more capability there uh, because we're not restricted by app stores. Um, you know, at some point, it will open up to being able to accept other currencies as well, I would hope, maybe even some stable coins and things too. So, yeah, once the web platform comes out, we, we, act, we get a lot more functionality and capability enabled. So, Awesome. Thank you very much. No problem. All right, two more guys, and then I got a jet. Um, we'll do this again next week. Astro boy, you got one there, mate. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. How's it going, Reese? Uh, yeah, just a quick question. Um, my question is concerned on the uh the wrapped Omi. I was wondering if we can transfer and utilize the wrapped Omi in the app to purchase NFTs. No, no, you can't. The wrapped Omi is uh, obviously on Ethereum. It's an ERC-20 version of the token. The app itself was designed to use the Go-20 version of the token. Um, but obviously, we're going to move across to Immutable. So what happens there is that you will need to, I think, I'll, I'll confirm this closer to, but I think you'll need to unwrap the, the token back to the GoChain version, then send it into the swap site and get the native ERC-20 version when we migrate to Immutable. Uh, at that point, that will be the token that can be used in the app. So you know, that, that's actually what's going to take a lot of this development time. The way the app is currently built obviously uses the Go20 standard, or that's how it's meant to, to function. Um, so we need to redevelop it to use the native ERC20 version. Okay, cool. Thanks. Appreciate it. No problem. Uh, Goody, are you up here, mate? You got one? Yeah, hey, Reese, I'm here. You can hear me? Yeah, mate, we got you now. Uh, well, we had you. I don't know if you've uh, <laughs> something else happened. How are we doing? Are we doing? Yep, yep. Whatever you're doing. All right. That's for that. That's for. First thing I want to know is where everybody's red circle is. A lot of people are lacking that in here. But uh, we'll, is there plans for the gamification to be mobile rather than PC or console to make it easier for people? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so the, there's a few different elements or layers of gamification. So the master collector is really like gamifying the app itself. Um, and then depending on what types of games or, or, or how that builds out, it would be available on both platforms, I would think. Obviously, if we're making AR games, 
uh, you kind of need your phone until wearables happen or until you can, you know, unless you tether something into your, your computer. Um, and as we all know, you know, a huge part of, of what makes VV so viral is the fact that you can just pull out your phone and show people your collection or, or drop your, your vault in AR and, and that kind of thing. So that will continue to be fundamental to, to the platform. Uh, and if we're building in sort of AR enhanced games or things like that, you know, that, then they will be, um, they'll be available on both platforms. Okay, because I think of similar something like uh, Gods Unchained. If that was on mobile, I'd be killing that game right now, mainly because they say you can earn crypto for playing it. If that were... I'd never put my damn phone... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. For, for something like Gods Unchained, and, and look, this might be the case for things for us in the future too, like you just have so much more power building using a computer for, for some of that stuff. Um, so I'm guessing it, it's probably just the server load or the capabilities of the phones that limit them to being on PC, but maybe, maybe they're developing a, a phone version of it as well. And yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really cool game. If, if no one's played it, uh, Robbie dropped some breadcrumbs in our AMA last week as well, that, that there will be other rewards and incentives. So I'd, uh, I'm just going to reiterate that if, if you haven't checked it out, I would suggest going and checking it out. Um, and have you guys spoken to Nyan about VVGo? Why not? Because when Pokemon comes, not if, when Pokemon comes, you can do it with Vivi. <laughs> yeah. yeah, look, we have talked about uh, future iterations of the VVverse actually being like a bit of a augmented reality overlay of on the real world. Now, I don't know if that doesn't come until we have wearables or, or what, but, um, you know, fundamentally, with the best and most exciting technologies that we can so that we can create the best user experiences that we can. Awesome. Thanks for taking the time. Everybody get those red circles up. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get that spreading. All right, fam. Uh, big thank you to everybody for being here. I'm going to have to uh, put a bit of a stop to it at the moment. Apologies if you didn't get the question uh, answered, but if you want to draw to one of our mods and I'll, I'll try to get to it as well sometime today. Really appreciate everybody being here. Hope you're all having a fantastic week. Stay tuned for more great news. And, of course, good luck with the DC bombshells drop. I hope it goes smoothly for everyone. For doing this, uh, you know, week in and week out for us. Again, thank you. We know that your time is incredibly valuable, and, and we all appreciate it as a community for you to uh, take the time, and you as well, Noah, to, to take the time aside to answer these important questions that we may have. Or is it all? Yeah, really yeah, it. yeah, thanks everybody. Really appreciate it. Have a fantastic week. Cheers. Uh, also, I'll just uh, go ahead and plug the drop for tomorrow. We do do a Thursday drop live every Thursday, uh, two hours before the drop goes. So make sure that you guys tune into that here in the Discord channel. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you're still running uh, the Granola Games there? Oh, yeah, you betcha. We did one a couple days ago and uh, may do one tomorrow. We've got a, got a couple collectibles, so we may do one tomorrow after the drop. Nice, nice. Now everybody tune in for that if you can. I'm going to move time zones just so I can be part of it. Yeah, we definitely got to get you in there and uh, play in a game with us. That'd be great. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys, have a fantastic day. We'll catch up next week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.